I'm going to share five sleeping options when overlanding with a four-wheel drive and dive a little more in details concerning the pros and cons of each of them as a family with kids point of view. So, what's the best off-road camper setup for overlanding as a family? Finding the best sleeping setup for a family in a 4x4 overlanding vehicle is complicated. I can tell you this because we have been overlanding as a family with our Land Rover Defender 110 for more than 13 years. And we have seen all the possible camping options. Five options are available for sleeping comfortably when overlanding. Ground tent or swag, rooftop tent, an interior sleeping layout, pop-up roof with a bed or camper on a pickup. If I forgot one, comment below. What's cool is that you can combine them to make the best setup for your needs. The decision to choose one setup over another one is very personal. It depends a lot on what you are ready to compromise when off-grid and living out outdoors and the most important aspect how many you are and how old are your kids because let's face it the choice of the sleeping setup will be decisive regarding the numbers of persons traveling inside of the vehicle why is it often a dilemma to have a great camper setup when traveling as a family but still keeping it as a car size well you need to be able to carry more than two persons in road mode and you need enough beds for sleeping comfortably when free camping. Let's review the five options and give them some pros and cons. Ground tents or swags. Ground tent for overlanding is the easiest solution. It's one of the best ways to get started. It's kind of cheap, no need to make any mods on your four wheels drive either. And when not overlanding, a tent can easily be stored. This is how we started, but honestly not the best in our Opinion. There are more suitable and convenient sleeping options for overlanding. If you agree with that, click the like button. The main disadvantage is an uneven ground, you might not find a good location to pitch your tent, it might be impossible to sleep in a tent next to your vehicle depending on where you are. Second sleeping option when overlanding and free camping, rooftop tents. There are two kinds of rooftop tents, the soft shell foldable ones and the hard shell ones. We have owned a hard shell rooftop tent for 10 years and it's a cool sleeping option for a family with kids. You can easily fit in two adults and two tiny kids but it won't be the case on the long term. The advantage is it's always there ready to be used no need of additional space near the car. Sleeping up high and not on the ground feels more secure and views are always better. It's comfier than a regular tent and you can leave your bed linens inside, which means more space in the vehicle for other stuff. And it's open and closed quite quickly. The disadvantages, the weight added on the highest point of the four wheels drive, you will need a roof rack to fix it. Rooftop tent prices can be high, but you better put the price to enjoy quality sleeping at night with no flapping tent cloth or water inside for example. And another disadvantage is if you need to get out of it at night it can be tricky. Third option, an interior layout. This is also something we had for many years and is something we will also have in the new setup we're currently working on. An interior sleeping layout can be a bit tricky for a vehicle that needs to carry more than two persons. The back seats can be an issue in building a comfy comfortable interior layout. The advantage is it's super discreet. It's also possible to have a great custom-made interior that suits your budget, your needs and your style. The disadvantage in my opinion is that it's only suitable for maximum two persons. Even if you have small toddlers, it will be more complicated to sleep comfortably with them inside of the vehicle compared to a rooftop tent. The airflow at night can also be a problem. Next, is the pop-up roof. This is one of the most liked sleeping options for many Land Rover Defender owners. I mean many solo owners or couples. The advantage is you can either keep the interior as it is or by removing the back seats, you can enjoy a custom-made livable interior setup. You know, with a seating area, a cooktop and a sink. A pop-top roof allows having a real double bed inside of the vehicle and having access to everything from the inside. It becomes a tiny home on the wheels. The disadvantages are the high price and not that convenient for families. Because the main purpose of having a pop-up roof is the livable space under the bed. Keeping the back seats make this setup less appealing. Last option is the camper on a pickup. Of course, 
you'll need the right vehicle for this because you cannot convert a normal four-wheel drive to a pickup one. Well, yes, you could <laughs> if you want, but it's not worth the money, right? The advantage is you can add a cool tiny home on your pickup. Some of them are fixed and others can be removed so you can use your pickup without the additional weight. It's often an all-in-one configuration and you might not need to spend hours working on the build. Very convenient interior space in case of bad weather. The disadvantages are the heavy weight added. You might go over the weight tolerated by the vehicle and because of that you'll certainly need to modify some parts for HD ones. You might not have enough space for a family with big kids. You'll have kind of a huge camper van and not very practical off-road depending on where you go. Now which one to choose or which ones to combine? It all comes down to how many you are, how you like to overland, what you are ready to compromise and where you like to stop overnight. Here's our personal point of view as a family of four overlanding with our Land Rover Defender since 2009. So you can imagine we have evolved our kids have grown up quite a bit and we have locked down our priorities over all these years. Our concern is to stay as packed as possible and take the least space on the ground when stopping overnight. Why is that? Maybe because of where we live and the places we have traveled to. Regions aren't so vast in Europe and free camping isn't as accessible as we would like it to be. So discretion is key for keeping problems at bay. We're more the bivouac type of overlanders, stopping for one night and moving on the next morning. And at night, it's very rare something stays outside of the car. That might also be because we are more weekenders as we aren't full-time overlanders. Okay, so our priorities are to keep our setup at a regular car size to be able to go almost anywhere, have enough seats for the whole family in driving mode and have four beds without anything set up out of the car when sleeping. Challenging? Yes. Compromising? Yes. Getting out of my comfort zone and still enjoying? Yes. Here are the few combining options for overlanding as a family to stay kind of discreet without having a huge campground next to the vehicle. Two rooftop tents. We don't like this idea because only possible with soft shell ones and we personally prefer the hard shell ones. It will also take all the space on the roof rack and remove some possible storage space. One rooftop tent and a convertible interior layout. This is a cool option up to four people traveling together. Still need to compromise on the interior layout and have an easy to convert one. It's like a two bedrooms home on wheels and we had this set up for 10 years. Pop-up roof and a convertible interior layout. This is possible up to a family of four and this is what we're working on this year. So later on I'll share a more detailed video about why and how. Now if you're a family of five or more maybe a trailer would be welcome but this considerably lowers the discreetness of bivouacs and also the accessibility of squishy remote places. So maybe adding a ground tent to a combined option I don't know. Larger roof tents for four are available, but they often exceed the width of the vehicle and this isn't optimal either. On top of that, kids grow up and parents will be happy to have a little more privacy when their kids are old enough to sleep alone. Another option for a family with small kids is to add a homemade bunk bed in the RTT. I saw this concept once, but I cannot find it anymore. So if this is something that interests you, I'll let you do the research. There are amazing setups out there, but stay focused. Being a family is more challenging and we have other needs than solos or couples. Check out this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.